John 11 verse 41 tells us that when Lazarus' grave had been opened, Jesus lifted his eyes heavenward and thanked his father that he'd been heard. But it's a little puzzling for us as readers because we're not given the transcript of what had been said. We don't even know when he said whatever it was. What we do know is that he went on in verse 42 to explain this expression of gratitude was for the sake of those observing him. And since, in a way, that includes us, I believe we need to stop and consider the implications of this curious and often overlooked passage before moving on to the main event of Lazarus' resurrection. Why? Because everything Jesus said and did was meant to be an example to us. These verses are not here just to pad the story. They teach us something. The Lord clearly wanted the coming miracle to be seen as a response to a request from Him to the Heavenly Father. He intended it to provide further evidence of His Messiahship to those who were present and inspire their faith. But He wasn't thanking God in advance for what was about to take place. He said He was grateful He'd been heard. And that's the key. Although it can't be known with certainty, it seems reasonable from the context to assume that if Jesus was referring to a prayer he'd offered at the scene, it would have been recorded for us, but it's not. And I think that at least means he wanted the crowd to understand what they were about to witness was the powerful result of son-to-father communication that took place out of their hearing. Could that private prayer have taken place just prior to these statements? Of course, but it could just as easily have happened hours or days before, and it's entirely conceivable he was bringing to light something that happened as far back as when the news of Lazarus' illness first reached him. His response to that sobering message from Mary and Martha was emphatic. He said, this sickness is not unto death, but for the glory of God. And I think it's quite possible his confident declaration flowed from an inner assurance that a silent request he'd made to the Father in that moment on behalf of his friends had been heard. And if that's the case, it's a powerful lesson to us. In the time between that forceful proclamation and the moment Lazarus walked out of his tomb, things became progressively dark and appeared hopeless, just like what sometimes happens in our circumstances. But when we truly know we've been heard by God, it literally changes everything. We find ourselves more able to trust our concerns to His plans and timing. It ushers us into what Philippians 4, 7 describes as the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding. And as Jesus expressed, it gives rise to a thankfulness that's not about an outcome we're expecting, but about the awesome knowledge that we've received an audience with the Lord of Lords and Maker of the universe. Earlier this week, our son called to tell us his doctor had removed some tissue from his leg and it had been diagnosed as malignant melanoma. So my wife and I immediately went to God in prayer, pressing hard into him until we sensed that deep assurance of his peace. We can't know how the rest of the story will unfold at this point, so we'll continue to pray our way through it. But we're not afraid because we know we've been heard. And that assurance can be yours as well, regarding whatever you may be facing today. Claim the promise of Isaiah 65, 24, where your heavenly Father says, while they are still speaking, I will hear.